Reno. Uh, in terms of Maccabi USA involvement, he has been the head coach of our junior swimming team this past summer at the uh, European Maccabi Games in Budapest, and he will be serving in the same role at the 21st Maccabee in Israel. So Coach Ben, take it away. Thanks, Steve. Hi, guys. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about me. Um, start coaching, actually, for me a long time ago. Um, for a lot of people, not so long, but it's been a little over a decade. And uh, I first started coaching, I was coaching club, actually, for a while in D.C. And then swam there and moved out uh, after I was coaching club in college there to Kansas City. Then I got my exposure back into the college world um, with Nevada and all within that was just kind of working into Maccabee, which was an awesome experience and I can't wait to do it again. Um, I know pretty much all of you are here to kind of figure out how you can maintain your skills and maybe learn something new uh, as you're out of the water or you know people that are out of the water before hopefully when we are allowed back into our pools and our weight rooms and so on and so forth and we can start competing again. Um, everybody's a little bit different. And so the big things that I'm actually going to be highlighting here is I'll give you a couple of examples, but for the most part, what I would like everybody to leave with is the ability to kind of be independent. Um, most of you, I see a, a couple of, of kids here, um, are probably taking feedback from your current coach. And that's one of the best things you can do, but those coaches are probably dealing with 10, 20, 30, 40 kids. I know coaches that deal with groups of 50, 60 on some of the mega clubs out there. Um, so the best thing you can do to A, help your coach and B, help yourself is to be a little bit of, a little bit independent as far as what you were doing and creating your own sort of stuff. Um, so we're gonna walk through kind of how to do that and the process of going through that. Um, and then we'll talk about a couple of resources to help you do those things, all right? And at the end, we'll go through a couple of examples, okay? And feel free if you have questions to just kind of send them in the chat. And there's only, we only got 13 people. So I will answer them as I, as I see them. All right, it'll help us kind of answer any questions and, and make everything go a little bit smoother. So again, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Nothing's a stupid question. If you don't know what something is, ask, okay? Um, if you don't know what something means, ask. Okay, some of this is not the simplest stuff, but there's a re reasoning behind everything. Okay. Um, so this fine as your body does get stale, um, and because of that, just making one specific set of exercises or following one specific set of exercises, no matter who gives it to you, isn't necessarily going to be the most beneficial thing for you. And so let's say you do run out of stuff, run out of things to do, then you're going to need to make something new. Um, and so we don't want to be doing the same routine for months at a time because your body is, is extraordinarily smart. And if you keep exposing it to the same stimulus, Over and over, until it doesn't, until it says, I've done this enough. And there are reasons for that that I'm not necessarily going to go into. But eventually, once you have done a specific workout seven to 10 different times, your body's going to stop getting something advantageous from it. Okay. Um, so you're going to want to create something new every now and then, and probably every month or two, you want to start doing something a little bit different. Um, and as far as creating these things, the other thing they're going to do is they're going to give you a little bit more confidence in what you're doing. Um, I'm sure you guys have confidence in your coaches or whoever is giving you workouts in the first place. If there is somebody, otherwise, well, you wouldn't be listening to them in the first place. Um, but a lot of the trouble that people have, you'll see with making their own stuff is they don't think that they're able to do it, or they don't think that they can make something that tell themselves to do something that is going to be beneficial. Um, and so by knowing 
a little bit of what you're doing, you're going to create some confidence in what you're doing and you're going to be more liable to actually go and do it and do it effectively and do it to the best of your ability. Okay. Um, so you'll look to create two to three, I'd say full body workouts. You, you read a lot of articles and specific things posted on social media about people doing chest day and leg day and don't skip leg day and all that jazz. Um, we're talking about swimmers here. Swimmers need your whole body. Okay. Um, you don't want to specifically target one aspect of your body, uh, whether it's doing crunches over and over and over and over and over again. Great. But swimming is a total body sport. So if you're just doing crunches, you're missing out on 90% of what can be helping you. Okay. Um, so for the first set of exercises that you come up with, those will, if you only need to come up with four or five different exercises, okay, and kind of string those together in an appropriate order, that'll actually last you. If you get two or three sets of those, that'll last you two or three months, okay? Um, and we'll talk about why that is in a minute. But when you go and put these things together, Okay, you're going to be looking for a little bit of everything because like we said, we are trying to find some a, a total body of work that is going to be affecting your total body. Okay, not just your shoulders, not just your hips, not just your core. Okay, so you're going to be looking for at least one thing that's going to be targeting your shoulder and your back. Okay, you're going to be looking at another thing that is probably going to be targeting your core. Okay, definitely one thing that's going to be targeting your lower body. Okay. And then another thing that's going to be targeting your chest or your arms. Okay. And like I said, you can create four or five different exercises of each piece of your body, divvy them up, put them into different groups and you'll be grinning. Okay. So we'll go through just one example. Okay. A squat, a shoulder press, a Russian twist and a hammer curl or bicep curl, whatever you want to do. That's four very, very simple exercises that if you string them together, you'll notice you got a squat, lower body, shoulder press, you got your shoulder, okay, and arm, a Russian twist, so feet off the ground. You don't need a weight, but twist, twist, twist. You don't even need to have your feet off the ground, but you've got that core engagement, and then a hammer curl or a bicep curl where, you know, just classical up and back, okay, you've got your arm engagement. Okay, just those four things together. Okay, you've just hit your whole body. Okay, now the next question everybody's going to have is, well, how much of these do I do? How many times do I do that? How many times do I go through this whole thing? How many, how much weight do I do? Do I do no weight? Do I look stupid if I do no weight? No, not at all. Okay, so what you'll end up finding is people have different um, resources available to them right now. Okay. So if you have nothing, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, you probably don't have actually nothing. Um, at the very least I've seen, I know girls that swim for me right now. Um, I have a pair of Polish girls who are actually on quarantine in Poland after they went back and they have nothing. It's a government apartment. And so they were, they got off the plane. They were stuck in this apartment with police going up and down the corridor. So they couldn't leave. All they had was a can of beans and whatever food was dropped off for them and some other can canned goods. And so they were literally using those cans of beans for arm curls. Okay. You can use just about anything. Um, as far as what you're looking for, what you'll typically find is for, if you want more strength, okay, you're going to lower your rep count and you're going to go a little higher weight. If you want the opposite, I'm going to flip it all around. Okay. For most part, as far as swimmers go, I would highly recommend going low weight or just body weight and going high reps. Okay. So probably 10 to 20 reps each. Okay. If I'm going to go and do this thing, let's say all I have is a can of beans. Okay. If I do 20 squats, take those beans, 20 shoulder presses on each one, Take those beans and do 20 Russian twists each side and 20 hammer curls, you'll feel it, okay? The more reps you do, 
all right, the less rest you actually need, okay? More correlated with how much weight you're using, okay? So the lower the weight, the less rest you actually need. If you're using big, let's say you have access to big dumbbells or your parents have an actual gym in your garage, okay? The more weight you're using, the more rest you need, okay? Even if you're using only four reps, you need to take your rest with it, okay? And let's say I go through this, okay, with squat, shoulder press, Russian twist, hammer curl. If I go through this three times, okay, it'll only take 20 minutes at most if you're taking a lot of rest, okay? But if I'm going 20 squats, 15 shoulder press on each arm, 20 each side Russian twist, and 15 hammer curls on each arm, okay? I've just cranked out 20, 40, 60, 60 squats, okay? 15, 15, 30, 50, 45 on each for shoulder press and hammer curl, and, and 60 on each side for the Russian twist, okay? That's a good number of reps, okay? And if you're doing that, something along those lines every day, your heart rate will elevate, okay? If you're giving yourself an appropriate amount of rest, and you will maintain, okay, what you already have kind of built up, okay? It is asking a lot of people to make new gains based off of the equipment we have and the resources we have available to us right now. Um, the biggest thing that we're asking people to do, um, especially at the college level, and I know a lot of club coaches that are asking of their club swimmers, is to not be out of shape, not sit around and do nothing, okay? Um, and especially if you're doing something like this on top of what you're already being given by the resources that you have available to you, you'll be grinning, okay? So if you make two or three of these with just three or four simple exercises and you do one on Monday, the second one on Tuesday, the third one on Wednesday, and you repeat that, You've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you got one day off, you've got a whole week, and you've only done each of these twice. Okay. And remember, we said your body will probably stop adapting to something after you've done it seven to 10 times. That gives you five to six weeks of not having to create anything else. That's almost two months. Okay. And your body's been adapting the whole time, on top of, like I said, whatever resources you've been given by your current coach. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Don't be afraid to do multiple rounds, drink plenty of water, you know, the typical stuff. Um, one of the other big things that I wanted to mention is, is we're talking about swimmers specifically. Um, swimmers are very well trained to deal with high aerobic capacity. So it means our heart rate is up a lot. Um, typically at the club and college level, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but what you end up seeing is you see people throughout a practice running an average of a heart rate of about 120, okay, which is, which is pretty high. So if you need to add in some sort of aerobic activity, so jogging or um, going for a bike ride or going for an actual run, or let's say you guys have a Stairmaster in your house or something, um, that's great, okay? But you can also use something like this, these dry activities, okay? to maintain that the biggest skill that a swimmer has, which is aerobic capacity by just keeping your heart rate up. Okay. So by going through this, by not taking a ton of rest. Okay. If you go through this four times. Okay. And you take about a minute rest between each round, it'll take you about 10 to 15 minutes and your heart rate will be up. I promise. Um, these kinds of things will help you no matter what, like I said, I'll say it again, in addition to hopefully the resources that you already have. Um, let's say you don't have those resources or you wanna add even more. Um, there are public resources out there that are absolutely amazing and they'll have videos to show you and all that stuff. Uh, two specifically, Swim Swam. I'm sure everybody knows Swim Swam. Um, I hope people have probably seen this already, but they've actually been putting out uh, a specific thread of quarantine workouts, 
And those quarantine workouts are literally any theme you can imagine so far. Everything from recovery to abs with Caleb Dressel to um, webinars on mobility with Chris Ritter from Ritter Sports Performance, um, who has recently become relatively big in the community. Um, but on top of that, you can go in the complete other direction and let's say you're trying to use this time to get better at, get, improve your mobility, okay? Improve your flexion, improve your extension. Swimmers are notoriously stiff. Um, I have a lot of girls right now on my team that are actually doing a lot of yoga with Adrian on YouTube. And I have seen some progress from them just in two or three weeks. That has been amazing because she runs uh, playlists for – general flexibility for shoulders, which we know are notorious in swimmers, okay? For triathletes, for runners. Uh, she has playlists for swimmers specifically. And so just taking those outside resources will help unimaginably, okay? It's just a matter of kind of going out and getting it and taking the initiative to sit down and write up something like this or first, in the first place, do what your coach is telling you to do. You know, at the very, very bare minimum, that's what needs to be getting done. Um, as far as a couple more examples, I told you guys I'd give you a couple. Um, a reverse lunge is another great example of a lower body exercise. Nice big step back. Um, a jump squat. If you are having issues where you don't have really the room or the space, like my Polish girls, for instance, <laughs> to get your heart rate up, a jump squat is going to be like your favorite exercise on earth. Okay. That will get your heart rate up faster than you can say, Oh, wow. Okay. Um, what else? Let's see here. A lateral lunge. will do the same thing. A front lunge. will do the same exact thing as well. Um, you can go into any sort of core exercise you can imagine, you know, a leg lift will do it. Um, a regular sit up will do it. A crunch where if everybody kind of doesn't know, there's a big difference between a crunch and a sit up. Okay, sit up and coming all the way up, crunch, shoulder blades just coming off the bottom of the floor. Um, any sort of core exercise you're doing, just make sure you're trying to pull your belly button actually through the small of your back to actually activate that core. Um, you'll see this in a couple of the Swim Swam articles, but they talk about having 3D work, three-dimensional work throughout your core. Uh, what they're referring to is don't just do crunches the whole time. That's not necessarily going to help you. Um, if you want to go look at it, those Caleb Dressel labs are actually a really good example of this. Um, does three or four different core exercises, variations on a crunch, where he's actually just shifting the portion of the abdominal wall that he's looking at because you're in upper, mid, and lower, and you have to work all three and your obliques. Um, and he kind of does that pretty well. Uh, you know, we talked about a shoulder press. Just doing a bent over rear fly, we'll do the same thing. You know, a tricep extension, a bicep curl. If you just turn your hands, bicep curl, hammer curl, they do do two completely different things. They both work on the same muscles, but they do do different things as far as the attachments go. Um, let's see here. Uh, those are some of the easy ones. A single arm row, all you gotta do is bend over and pull. Okay, um, just some really basic examples of exercises that you can put together as long as you are getting something for your lower body, something for your chest and your arms, something for your back and your shoulders and something for your core, you can put all those together. Um, I tend to try and mix up pushes and pulls. Um, you'll hear those a lot when you listen to strength coaches talk. Unfortunately, this is kind of the world we live in where staying in shape is gonna mean a lot of strength training, um, in-house strength training. So a version of a single arm row so where you're just bent over and pulling that's a pull whereas a shoulder press is a push you know think of it pretty literally you know a push up is going to be a push whereas some sort of a row or a chin up is going to be a pull um so yeah it's all pretty straightforward and pretty basic don't overthink it is the other biggest thing i can say um does anybody have any major major questions as far as because i haven't seen any yet um hoping to get a couple because as it is, it's all so dependent on what people need specifically. Um, so if you think you are limited in some sort of way where you need some specific ideas, um, I, I hesitate to put out a lot of specific ideas 
until I know what the you know specific issue is because I don't want to confuse people. So does anybody have any questions, like specific questions to something that they might have a problem with at home? No? Is anybody, I see a couple of kids. Um, ben, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what, would you say that in this time frame, would it be more important to focus on your upper body strength or your leg strength, or is it really equal? Uh, both. If you neglect one or the other, that's a really good question, Steve. If you neglect one or the other, what you're going to find is you're going to hop back into the pool and you're going to feel it. So, because when we swim, we swim with our entire body. Okay. That's why you see swimmers is typically pretty lean. Um, as a coach, one of the things that kind of jumps out to me, especially on a, from a recruiting point of view, um, if I see somebody who's super heavy or they don't kick at all, they're super heavy into their upper body or vice versa, where they can't pull any water. Uh, that is a, a big red flag to me um, because you're essentially, you're limiting exactly 50% of what you can actually do. Um, so the answer to that is don't neglect either or. If you are going to do days and a set of exercises where it's going to be primarily geared towards upper body or lower body or a specific area of the body, that's fine. But make sure that you are going day by day where if you're going to do a day of all chest and arms, great. Make sure you're doing a day of all legs. Make sure you're doing a day of back. Okay. Make sure you're getting it all in and getting it all into, uh, help it all kind of connect together. So does that help? It's a good question, Shane. Um, I personally, as far as diet goes, uh, so Shane has any apps you can recommend for diet. Um, that's hard right now because of people's limited access to great food. Um, the best thing you can do, I personally like the Under Armour app. Um, you do have to go and enter everything, but my biggest thing I'll say is don't count calories. Do not count calories. If you're gonna count anything, um, go do some Googling on macronutrients. So fats, proteins, and carbs. And those are the three things that you wanna balance. Um, and basically there are calculators out there where all you gotta do is put your height, your weight, your gender, um, and what your goal is and it'll spit numbers back out at you. And those numbers are actually pretty reliable. Um, what you'll find is don't overconsume them, but if you underconsume them, not the end of the world. You're not gonna, you're not gonna overshoot your goal, okay, by underconsuming. Um, and Shane, do you need a heart rate monitor? No, that's a really, really good question. So me personally, and a lot of my girls do smartwatches, um, but, Knowing how to take your own heart rate is a great thing to know how to do just in general life, just to keep healthy and fit after you're done swimming. Um, there are two ways to do it. Never use your thumb. Your thumb has its own pulse. Okay. Always use your front two fingers and your wrist is one way to do it. Where on me, you can see these two lines. That's my tendons Slot it in right here. Just hold and you'll feel the pulse go and just count or right underneath your neck. Okay, that one's a little bit easier to feel. Um, if you use your thumb in there, then you're gonna end up getting a conflicting uh, pulse in there and it's gonna throw you all off. The best thing to do, um, people measure their pulse based off either doing counting for six seconds or 10 seconds, okay? Um, I personally like doing it for 10 seconds uh, with my girls in the pool because they're tired. Their heart rate is up towards 160 to 180. Some of them that run hot, they're up over 200. Uh, and so they don't want to actually count off the clock. And so it means that they can go up and as soon as they feel the first beat, they just got to register what number they saw and they count until they see that number again. Okay. And so you've just counted for 10 seconds. So you multiply by six for 60 seconds. Uh, if you count over 10, se uh, six seconds, multiply by 10, it's a little easier. Um, but no, you don't need a heart rate monitor. Obviously they are very, very helpful, but if you can do it yourself, great, everybody can. Um, Evan, would you recommend doing certain exercises to exhaustion? It depends. <laughs> that is a very good question, but it, it depends. Um, 
you need to be balancing it in the right direction with what you are doing for recovery afterwards. Okay. So if you're going to go and do pushups to exhaustion, okay. Like I've seen one of those swim swim articles actually goes and references test set days where any swimmer knows what a test set is. And usually it, it is involves a lot of crying and fear and, uh, but Anyway, it mentioned doing push-ups to max and then sit-ups to max and pull-ups to max. If you try and do those one after the other, you're going to get some pretty skewed results, okay? So imagine trying to do push-ups to max and then rolling over and immediately going into sit-ups to max and then getting up and immediately going into pull-ups to max. Do you think you're going to get reliable? Like, do you think you're going to be able to do a true max on sit-ups? Probably not. Um, so it's all about doing balancing what you're doing with an appropriate amount of rest. Okay. And a good way to do that is through, um, heart rate actually. So to be fully recovered, I don't let my girls out of the pool until their heart rates under 110 at the end of practice. Um, after a max effort, I typically like to see heart rate back under 120 before they get up and do it again. Um, if we're looking for some sort of lactate threshold work, then I'll probably, put them back on the block or back on the wall within two to four minutes. Um, just enough time for everything to start cycling. Okay. But not enough time for them to get completely back. If you're doing actual max threshold work to see, to get a number that you're going to be using later on for a base, then make sure you're fully recovered and hydrated and maybe eat a little bit of something. Um, drink some fruit juice or something before you go into the next one. Okay. Um, typically what I'll, what I usually say is only do one max effort per day. Okay. Cause that's how you're going to get a true max effort. Um, if that's something that you're going to be doing, uh, you're going to be basing numbers off in the future, because in that case, if you try to do, if you don't get a true max effort, then your numbers are all skewed. So, um, what do you recommend best strategies for easing back into routine when pools open back up? Um, that's a great question. Um, I can speak from experience. I tore my shoulder up sophomore year of high school, got back into it too quick and pretty much destroyed my college prospects out of it. It's not fun. Um, listen to your body. 100% listen to your body. Um, if you are starting to feel pain in any specific portion of your body, you have to adapt. Okay. Even if you think, Oh, I'm just not going to get back fast enough. You have to adapt. Um, so the number one best strategy for easing back into routine is watch your heart rate and listen to your body. Okay. If you're running what you think is a max heart rate within 15 minutes of, of you getting back in the pool, tone it down. <laughs> okay. Um, best thing you can do is a listen to your body, B track your heart rate and C is going to be take your time. Okay. Um, if you say you're going to be in the water for a thousand yards, it's great. Okay. But that could take you an hour. It could take you two hours. If you're going to say, I'm going to do a thousand yards, don't put a time limit on yourself. Okay. Make sure you have a lot of time. Um, if you say you're going to go 2000 yards, put, don't put a time limit on yourself. If you're going to do the opposite and say, Hey, I want to do uh, in 30 minutes this week. I want to do an hour next week and so on and so forth. Don't even, don't take any consideration to how much you're swimming. Okay. Because one is going to contrast with the other and it's going to cause you to not listen to your body and you're going to overdo it. Um, what do you recommend? What's your advice for high school students regarding college recruitment since the long course season was interrupted? Uh, it's a great question also. Uh, that one was from Shane too. Um, what you'll find actually is college coaches care a lot more about short course. Um, so long course is great if we see trends going up um, and especially for international students, but it doesn't really apply to us. Um, long course season is kind of getting better time for a lot of American kids. And I've got two dogs fighting in the background. Joy. Um, long course season is kind of getting better time for a lot of American kids and what that allows is them to go back in and really showcase and fine tune everything in the fall, in the winter, in the spring. Um, so as far as just advice for, for high school students regarding college recruitment, 
Um, the best advice I can give is keep yourself in shape and keep in touch with any of the coaches that you've already been talking to. Um, right now we've got unlimited calls. So obviously don't bug them, but you know, if you have a phone call with them once every other month and just send them a text every now and then, you know, just ask them how they are. It goes a long, long, long way. Um, let's see here. Pools are all closed. Have been rowing indoors while watching the Olympic rowing races for form and cadence. Uh, any other suggestions so as not to lose form or fitness for a sprint triathlete? Um, Doug, that is a great question. Um, basically, going through the motions is the best thing that you can do right now since you can't get on the water. Um, I would highly, highly recommend actually for a sprint triathlete going in and doing, if you've never done yoga before, um, highly recommend going and doing it on YouTube uh, with Adrian. She has a specific playlist for triathletes that gears specifically to you guys. Um, and as far as rowing specifically, um, rowing indoors versus outdoors is going to be a lot different. Um, and as far as looking for form and cadence, fortunately, the nice thing is, is with the ergs on the inside, you can track your cadence pretty easily. Um, yeah. Train towards what you are looking to do in your actual race, in your actual race. So if you know that your coxswain is going to have you on whatever the cadence is, you know, that's what I would look to be hitting on the erg. Um, you know, the more specific you can be, the better. So right now, I think you're doing the exact right thing you can be doing. Um, so anything else, guys? Because I know right now those were some pretty specific questions. Um, and like I said, the theme of it is figure out what is necessary for you. Um, what are your thoughts about open water swimming? So Shane just asked what are my thoughts about open water swimming. Um, it's not allowed in a lot of the country right now. Um, places will people will go do it on their own. If you can get in and swim, oh, do it. Okay, so if you, let's say you are stuck on a beach, like I am, thank God, um, or you do have access to some sort of lake or body of water that you can get in and you are allowed to, go do it, 100%. Being in the water is going to be better than any sort of, than trying to substitute it for any sort of dry land exercise that you can come up with. Um, it's just, we can be as specific as we want, but we're still not swimming. Um, and that's purely because of how, mass is related to on earth versus in the water. Um, on earth, we are bound by gravity. In the water, completely different. Okay, you're not. That's why it's so hard for people to pick up swimming later and later and later. That's why I have talked to, it's like, it's like picking up a language. You find little kids being able to do it really quick. Whereas the older you get, it, it does get a little bit harder specifically because you are trying to learn how to manipulate your body in a different medium than what you have been exposed to your entire life. Um, and so if you can get in the water, even if you have an endless pool, great. If you just have a pool in your backyard, go hop in. Okay. Um, even if that means that you're just doing streamlined jumps or just streamlined pushes off the wall, still, Okay, you are holding your body in that different medium that you aren't going to be able to achieve unless you've got some sort of zero gravity um, tank in your house. You're not going to achieve anything better than actually getting in the water. Um, so, anything else? Like I said, or like I was saying, you know, the specific questions are the ones that are going to help people the most. Uh, for those with their own pools, surgical tubing, yes, 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 Doug using any sort of tubing that you know isn't going to snap on you is a great thing. So I have a lot of girls in the Bay area right now, and we sent them home pretty early because we were kind of scared that they were going to get locked out um, since they were pretty drastic over there. But the number of videos I've gotten of my girls being in wetsuits and having tethers on their butts 
has been astronomical, but it's been great because they've been in the water and they've just had a sister or a sibling, somebody standing back there and just holding them back. So they've pretty much been in an, in an endless pool. Um, so again, looks like we've been about 37 minutes or so. Uh, anybody have any other specific questions? You know, if you have specific questions about like, you know, you think these, these exercises might go hand in hand or something, remember just the big things. Okay. Make sure you hit your whole body. Make sure you're not doing all pushes or all pulls if you are on dry land um, and mix it up as much as you can and try and have your heart rate up high. Make sure you're resting appropriately. Um, there is no right answer on how much you need to be resting. Okay. More is merrier in this case. Okay. Um, back to, you know, Evan asked it earlier of max efforts, but if you don't rest, you're not, well, your body is not going to respond appropriately. Okay. There's a reason that when we coach, we write our workouts with specific work rest ratios in mind to achieve specific things. Um, and no matter what, if the work rest ratio is too low, so you're just working all the time, it's kind of why in coaching we have moved away from the old animal lane, the old distance animal lanes for the most part of Sherm Tavor just making people go crazy. Uh, anyone retrofitted a rowing machine sliding seat into a vassal? That's an interesting question. Huh. Have you managed to do that? I've never tried, but that would be so interesting because I don't see a ton of VASA trainers out there anymore because a lot of them just rusted out and the tubing is hard to replace and they're just kind of a pain in the rear now, uh, unless you have them relatively new, but that is an awesome idea. Um, taking a rowing machine sliding seat into a VASA swim trainer because, you know, Doug, Doug's got the, the nail on the head right now with just being specific. And so even when you're doing your, any dry exercise, if you want it, you can make something up. It doesn't have to be a well-known exercise. Like just cause it's not a push up that has been around for as long as anybody can remember, doesn't mean it's not going to be something that can help you. Okay. When you swim, when you swim, when you do anything, um, if you are being introspective and thinking about what's going on with your body, you can tell, you know, what muscles are doing what. And so you can create a, an exercise of your own that will be more specific than probably any traditional exercise. Okay. Like I've seen, uh, at Cal, they went out and they specifically took their backstrokers and they took one guy with a big medicine ball, big slam ball. He was standing next to another backstroker that was on a, uh, a block, big block about a couple of feet up. And the guy on the floor had the slam ball. And just like he was doing a start, boom, up right in line with the Doug, Doug, Doug seen this. And the guy that was standing on the block grabs the ball as it's coming up. And just like his catch, boom, elbow through drive, rotate right into the ground. So be as creative as you want. You know, that's the key thing. Be as creative and as specific to what you need. Um, injury, let a mind. <laughs> you can't get it back. Doesn't rust except humid conditions. Like, yeah, exactly. In an indoor pool setting, setting, um, skate or longboard retrofit to swim on dry land. I've never done it myself. It would probably work. But again, Doug's got the point right on the head where if you can adapt something, even if it's non-traditional or if you've never seen it before, it doesn't matter. If it's specific and you're feeling that same activation that you get in the pool, you're going to be grinning when you go back compared to everybody else that was like, I don't know what to do. So. Are there any further questions for Coach Ben? Well, Ben, um, Maccabi USA wants to thank you again for taking the time to share us your tips uh, for keeping active and fit during this unfortunate time. And we thank everybody for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, we'll be sending out an email to everybody shortly uh, with a feedback survey. So please let us know your opinions on today's event and any other events that you would like us to uh, fulfill you know, in the interim. And thanks again, everybody. Ben, everybody have a great day. Thanks guys.